Okay, done with the YouTube face. Uh, that should get a lot of clicks. So uh, what, what are we looking at here? I've got three Chrome uh, windows open and I've got a ghost that is flying between them. Now, if you're a web developer, it should be a little bit surprising to you that the ghost is somehow traveling between different uh, web web windows, browser windows, right? Uh, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how though I've got that working. It's very hacky, it's very dumb, but it's a little bit of fun. Before we get too far into the implementation, I want to show you a, a few other things just so you get an idea of how this is working. So the the ghost is traveling between these uh, these windows, right? And then if I if I move a window around, like the ghost will still. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Well, that'll still work. But anyway, the ghost will still uh, still work inside like the the window even if it's moved around so it doesn't feel like I've hard coded the, the coordinates it's just that the ghost is being displayed regardless of where the window is uh, which is I think kind of cool okay I'm gonna try and diagram this out uh, we'll see how this goes so I have a bun server application and uh, bun if you're not aware it's just an alternative uh, alternative alternate different JavaScript runtime uh, which allows me to run TypeScript but this could be done very easily with node but I want it all to be done with JavaScript you'll see why shortly so the bun server is the one who orchestrates the entire thing right like uh, this is the the guy in charge and the first thing he's going to do is he's going to spin up uh some windows right so he's going to spin up some chrome windows okay so i'm in my index.ts uh, and like right here this is where i'm going to set up some browser windows and if you look at this function it's going to look a little bit weird and then we're going to get into like what is actually happening here uh because this is the weird part Okay, so we have set up browser windows, which immediately calls a function called run and awaits it and then gets some results and then sets them in some global variable. I should mention none of this code is good. None of this code is idiomatic. Don't copy any of this code. So everything inside these curly braces, right? Everything inside this function is being run by JXA. So JXA is JavaScript for automation. And this was something that uh, Mac OS introduced a few years back, I think in 2014. It was a way to automate your Mac with JavaScript. And I didn't know about JXA, and I found that it is universally despised. Here it says this document is no longer being updated. So if we visit the documentation website for Apple and then we type in JXA, you will get nothing. So I don't even know if it's supported anymore. Right, I was supposed to be diagramming. Okay, so spin up Windows using JXA. Oh, that's not good. There. JXA allows for automation of your Mac. Okay, um, if you're on Linux, you can do this a bunch of other ways. If you're on a Mac, you shouldn't even be using JXA. JXA was actually released around 10 years ago as a way of providing a different way to script your Mac as opposed to the older version, which is called AppleScript, something I also did not know existed. So AppleScript has been around for an extremely long time and it is a very weird language. So right here from my blog, I actually have some uh, AppleScript. This is real AppleScript. Like this is a programming language that exists on your Mac right now, right? So just read this. Like it, ha it has the word the, the is in the programming language, right? And it's just, you know, the, this folder. So all this code right here, this is going to be run by uh, JXA. And not exactly because I'm using TypeScript, so there's a compilation layer, but generally speaking, this is being sent to JXA uh, as, a, as a scripting language. So that also means that nothing in here can reference anything outside of here, right? So this is just being sent over as a string. It's very weird. All right, so sorry for that detour. Let, let's get back to it. So we have a bun server application. It's going to spin up some windows using JXA. So we set up an Objective-C bridge. I don't know what that means, but we do. And then that allows us to get the size of the actual screen. Then I do a little bit of math to figure out how big I want each window to be. And then look here. So I say application Chrome. Chrome, make a new window, right? And then, hey, here's the active tab I want you to be, right? So uh, I'm using window.id and that ID is going to be a unique ID for this new window that GXA has just made for me. And then I can set the bounds of it. I can say, okay, I want you to be here. I want you to be there uh, like that. If you're like me, uh, when I was writing this code initially, you might think this is great. Awesome. I can just write things in JavaScript. It is not great. So all of this code right, is not being run by bun. It's not being run by notice, but being run by JXA somehow. And 
the error messages you get out of it are just not, they're just nothing. Just like, I don't understand this message. And then what message? I don't know. And you just have to debug the whole thing. It, it's it's terrible. And it's, it's clearly not supported. Like nobody's using it. There's a few Reddit posts with like one comment each just saying, don't use JXA. And JXA doesn't even really behave like JavaScript. Like it's like the syntax looks like JavaScript, but sometimes like I'll have a, a value and that value will or won't exist depending on, I don't know, it's, it's very weird. Okay, but anyway, great. So I have spun up some windows. Okay, let me show you what that actually looks like right now. So I'm gonna run bun index.ts again. This could be node and index.js. You get the idea. I run this, the windows show up and then each window has a unique ID, right? Uh, we're just passing this as a uh, URL parameter. But why does each window need a unique ID? It's because the windows themselves don't know anything about what's going on with JXA. So they need a unique way of saying like, this is who I am. Tell me where the ghost is relative to me. And then this thing just starts making a ton of network requests. And it's just constantly asking, where is that ghost? Where is that ghost? You can see it's it's doing like, I don't know, it's doing a lot. I think it's, I have it every 50 milliseconds, something like that. So it's doing a ton of these and just asking where's the ghost and then it's rendering the ghost, right? Um, and then I also have this special header uh, right here, X ghost finder. Uh, and I didn't actually, your custom header value. I guess I just love, just the fact that the header's there means like, okay, I want you to tell me where the ghost is. And then it will give me back this information. So the ghost X and the ghost Y, and that is relative to the current window. So the browser doesn't care actually where the ghost is. The browser just says, okay, for me, top 360, left 910, throw it over there. Might not even be visible, but that's where the ghost is relative to me. So these can also easily be negative. And this is all very dumb. Like this is not how you should code anything good, but it's kind of fun to do. Right, okay, so number two is browsers ask where the ghost is. I give myself a bit more room here and then render the ghost. All right, so you can see that this ghost is floating around, right? And it's being rendered by this browser, but it's actually being rendered by every browser every time. It's just off screen, right? So this guy right here, he's rendering that ghost right now. You just don't see it. I'm actually supposed to be drawing more of these boxes, right? Like that's how you're supposed to use this thing, right? We go from here to there. We go from here and then back there. I guess this one also goes back here. Okay, so after we set up the browser windows, then every 100 milliseconds, I fetch the window position. So I'm asking JXA, hey, tell me where are all my Chrome windows? And I don't discriminate. So if I have another Chrome window, it's also gonna tell me about that. Because again, this code is very sloppy and quick. And then I also have to move that ghost around, right? So he has a goal that he wants to get to and he gets there, he gets a new goal. So he just keeps moving around. And then lastly, I have my web server. Again, this is not how you should do a web server. This is terrible code, but it's fine, right? So I check. Are you asking for the ghost picture? Okay, here's the ghost picture. That way the, the browser has the ghost picture. And then I say, okay, are you asking, like, are you asking where the ghost is? If you aren't, okay, I'm going to return you this HTML, which is the client app, right? It's just, it's not a lot, it's just a little bit of code here. Um, but like, again, this, this will get returned for like, if you ask for the favicon, you're getting this because this is sloppy. Okay, so if you are a client and you're asking where the ghost is, first we're gonna try and get your ID. If there isn't an ID, we 404. Um, if we can't find the window, we say 202. This is because just in case a client asks somehow before there is, I can probably remove this at this point, it doesn't matter. Again, bad code. And if we do find the window, right, then we just, uh, we ship it off. We say, okay, like let's, let's wrap all this up and we ship it off and we say, this is Jason and the client is very happy about that. I'm doing everything in absolute pixel values, right? So the ghost image is this big. How do I know that? Because I downloaded that ghost image. And I looked at the pixels. This is how big it is. And how big are my client windows? I don't care, but they can't be zoomed in. The second they're zoomed in, it doesn't work. And this is sloppy. This is supposed to explain things to you. One, two, and then I've got client and then JA. I didn't even spell it right. A number of people have reached out to me uh, fairly persistently asking, how can we support your channel? We really love the work that you do. It's really important. It's very well produced. How can we support this? Honestly, at this point, the biggest obstacle for me is just a matter of free time. So if you are in the neighborhood and you want to mow my lawn, like I, I mowed it recently, but next time you can mow it while I make a YouTube video, just keep it down. So it doesn't ruin the audio, right? Uh, that, that would save me a couple hours or 
So like this tree here, like I have to break this in the fall, but like if you want to cut, cut it down, you can take the wood. Like honestly, it's good wood. Uh, that, that would save me a ton of time and really support the channel uh, because we are brought to you by viewers like you. All of the code is available uh, in the GitHub repo. And I also have a blog post, which right, like I try and explain how this works. I, I don't do a great job, but I, I try my best. But if you want to run this, if you're on a Mac, very easy. You just need bun, Google Chrome, that's it. it should just work. Uh, when you exit the process, it's going to close all your Chrome windows. So have fun with that. Uh, if you're on Linux, you can't run this, but you could easily do something similar. So if you are using a tiling window manager, it probably has a CLI where you can say, hey, where are my windows right now? They'll tell you, great. You can probably just filter on the name and then your way to the race is same idea. Going forward, I will not be using JXA or Apple Script. Uh, I don't like originally my idea was I want to I want to start tiling things. I think it'd be cool to tile things like I'd like to have a key press to just tile certain windows. And I hadn't thought more about it than that. I just started looking into things and I found Apple Script and then I found JXA, got excited and then disappointed such as life. But I've now found this thing called Hammer Spoon, which is apparently a way to automate Mac OS using Lua, which I think would be pretty good. Not bad to know some Lua. Uh, let me know if you've used this and if it's awesome uh, or if it's in fact terrible. The impression I get is that it's pretty good. I've seen quite a few people recommend it, but I also see that there's not a lot of commits recently. There's a lot of issues, so maybe I don't know, but it's, it's always hard to judge and you really have to just dive into things and figure out if they are good which I hope that this one is. Or maybe I just need to learn Swift if I want to learn how to automate my Mac. Um, people pay for Mac apps, right?